So let's take a look at all of that stuff I just talked about in that 18-minute podcast just before this one. Again, I really apologize for that podcast being so long, but whew, did we have a lot of stuff we got to go through. Okay, quick summary. Here we go. First things first. When you're looking at the square root of any kind of function, remember, it's only defined when you're taking the square root that cannot be negative. So it's only defined when this function, the original function, is greater than or equal to zero. Okay? So we can't define it when it's less than zero because we cannot take the square root of a negative number, of course. Right? That is, the graph will always be then above the x-axis. If there's anything you want to remember, it's that. Okay, so we also dealt with something called invariant points. Do you remember when the invariant points happened? Well, of course, it happened when f of x equals to zero. Now remember, f of x is just a fancy way of saying y. So y equals to zero. What does that mean? Well, that's the x-intercept. Ah, uh, yes. And the other part that was an invariant point was when this thing became f of x equals to 1. So when you're actually, when you get into graphing these things, first thing you want to do is find that x-intercept and then also find out where that graph equals to 1. Case in point, take a look at this particular graph. Okay, so there's our x-intercept here. There's that point y equals to 1 right here. Now, those are the invariant points. There's our x-intercept. There is when the graph hits 1. Cool. Now, the other thing that's very, very important about this is this. Between this point and this point, this graph is actually above the original graph. As soon as it hits this point, it goes below. Take a look over here. The original graph is in red, right? So first things first, there's our first invariant point. Then at 1, na 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 Na, 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 Boom. There it is. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Now, that means when we take the square root of this original red graph, we start here and look. We go above the original graph to this point and then below it. Look again. Above the original graph to this point and then below it. Very, 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 very important to remember that. So, that's why I kind of wrote this down. Domain, of course, it's all the values where the original graph was above or equal to zero, okay? Nothing exists because if you look at this, this graph exists down here, but the radical graph starts on the x-intercept. It does not include any value down here, okay? The act, it, another thing here is the range. Remember, this is the values of y for which this is defined. What do I mean? Well, do you remember that graph that started down here and opened downwards? And then you realized, oh my goodness, its entire thing is below the x-axis? That means there was no square root function of it because it wasn't defined in that area. Got it? Got it. Mapping. Mapping, of course, you take all the x's, the x's stay the same, but you take the y values and you square root them. Piece of cake. All right. So let's do some more summing from the podcast before this. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh, okay. Interesting thing is graph. When you got the graph of the square root of f of x, f of x from the original graph, here's a couple things that we got to remember. Okay? First thing that you got to remember is this. Okay? When f of x is below zero, the graph does not exist. Remember that. So if you had a graph down here that looks like this, guess what? There's no square root graph of that. There's no radical graph of that. Okay. Second, when f of x is zero and f of x is one, these are your invariant points. Okay? Reason why, think about this. Think about this. What's the square root of zero? Zero. What's the square root of one? One, there's your invariant points. Now, here's the other thing that we talked about. Remember, between these two invariant points, zero and one, between zero and one, the graph always lies above the original. There's the original, always lies above it. Finally, when you get out to this thing above, greater than negative one, the graph 
lies below it. Simple, okay? Now, here's the other thing is, if you're ever stuck and you need to do the square root of something, just square root it. Because think about it. Take these values, let's say it was something like 9. Square root 9, you got 3. Okay? So all you got to do is square root it. So I have the most incredible question for you. You ready? Check this out, baby. Whoa. Look at that monster. And it's going to say, sketch the graph of this. Well, first things first, you got to remember. You got to remember the basics. Basics is nothing's below the x-axis. Look for your invariant points. Square root the numbers that you can square root, right? Let's do it. Here we go. I'm going to do this from left to right. So I'm going to start on this x-intercept right there. Think about it. This graph does not exist. This part of the graph does not exist. You cannot take a square root of a negative. Okay, perfect. Now, here's that one. Remember? Na -na 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 there's our second invariant point. Our first invariant point was this guy right here, which is, of course, our x-intercept. Our second invariant point is when y equals to 1. You know and I know this graph has to be outside of this guy right here. Perfect. What about the rest of the graph? Well, check it out. I gave you a point of 4. A point of 4, think about this, y equals to 4, square root of 4, that's easy, that's 2. So right at this point here, and for this entire section right here, the square root of that is always going to be 2. So from here to here, that's what the graph is going to look like. It's just going to be flat. But remember, now that we've passed this point of 1, the graph just curves kind of inwards like this. Oh, okay? Now, keep on going. Put that other, look, look. Look, 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 look. No, 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 no. There's that one. So you know and I know this has got to curve downwards towards that. It's going to intersect here because there's another invariant point. And check it out. We have another intersect. So da 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 Boom. It's outside of the graph. Same thing goes with this guy. Look, keep that puppy going. Look at that. Right to here. There's another invariant point. This guy's outside the graph from the x-intercept to this point of 1. Now, okay, we got the square root of 2. All right, so I popped on my calculator there, hit the square root of 2, and I found this to be about 1.4. That's going to help. Okay, how? Watch. That's the square root of 2 at this point. So 1.4. Well, there's 1.4. That's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8. It's going to be 1.4. It's going to be right around there. So this point, once it's square rooted, becomes about 1.4. Notice that it's got to be inside the graph. So you're going to have something that kind of looks like that to that point right here. Perfect. Okay. There's another invariant point to another intercept. That's got to be outside the graph again. And then this part of the graph, again, does not exist. So what's this graph going to look like? Simple. Starts here, curves outside, goes up to here like this to 2, goes straight across for a while, comes down, goes through the invariant point, down to this invariant point, back up to that invariant point, up to about 1.4, over, down, and kaboom. There's our graph, beautifully in blue. So, let's start talking about the domain and range. Okay, let's do the domain first. Think about this. Where is your domain? Your domain is from this point, right out here, which looks like about negative 7, negative 7, all the way out to this point. And I got a little bit, wait a second. Oh, it's all the way out to 20. Okay, so your x values have to be right in the middle of that. That's where your entire graph is. Okay, now let's talk about the y values. Think about this. The biggest y value you have here is 2. The smallest y value is 0. So your range then is between 0 and 2. Done. There's your graph. That's how you graph something that looks pretty strange. Things you remember. Follow those invariant points and watch out for that one right there, ba -ba 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 -ba. that helps you out incredibly in graphing something like this.